evening. Welcome once again to our Lectio Divina. Let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy. For on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome once again. And for this Lecture Divina, we are in the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And the Gospel for this coming Sunday is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11, verses, verses 25 to 30. But before we go to the Gospel, a little of Bible study. The first reading is taken from the book of the prophet Zechariah. So, if you remember last Lecture Divina, we mentioned already something about the prophets, that there were 12 minor prophets and 5 major prophets. If you allow me to run down the 12 minor prophets, they are Amos, Hosea, Micah, Zephaniah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Obadiah, Joel, and Jonah. These are 12 minor prophets because they have short, short books. Not because they are not important, but their books are shorter than the major prophets. They are longer. There are five of them, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is connected with the book of Lamentation, Baruch, Ezekiel, and Daniel. So these are the 12 and the major, 12 minor prophets and the major prophets. Zechariah is part of the minor prophets. And Zechariah is something special because he is part of the post-exilic prophets. That means after the exile. There are the pre-exilic prophets, there is the exilic prophets and the post-exilic prophets. You pre-exilic prophets, these are the prophets before the Israelites were exiled in Babylon. And these prophets, most of their prophecy and messages were actually strong messages because they invite the people of God to repent. Otherwise, they will be punished. They will be exiled. And so, some of these prophets were really prophets of doom, for example. And these are, for example, Amos, Hosea, Micah, the Proto-Isaiah, Habakkuk, Jeremiah, Nahum, and Zephaniah. These are pre-exilic prophets. And the exilic prophets are the prophets during the time of exile in Babylon. And these were Ezekiel, Deutero, Isaiah, and the book of Lamentations. So, this exile of the Jews were about 50 years in Babylon. It started at least from the time of the kingdom of Judah when it fell in the year 586 BC up to the year 539 until the Persian conquered the Babylonians and the Persian king released or liberated the, the Jews from Babylon. So, in the meantime, exile was about 50 years. And after exile, here comes the prophets, post-exilic. And these post-exilic prophets, one of them was Zechariah. So, together with Zechariah was the prophet Obadiah, Joel, Haggai, and Malachi. So, they were five post-exilic prophets. So, back it post-exilic because it was after the exile. For more than about 50 years, the Jews were exiled and now they are brought back to Jerusalem thanks to the king of Persia, King Cyrus, when he ordered the Jews to go back to Jerusalem. And what is very beautiful here, he even helped the Jews to rebuild Jerusalem. And so these post-exilic prophets 
most of their messages were messages of hope. Hindi na sila yung parang prophet of doom. Although, he would warn the people of, of, the, of Israel that if they commit sin, they would be punished again by, by God, Yahweh. So, they have to be very careful. They have to be faithful to the commandments of God. So, the preoccupation of these prophets, especially in particular Zechariah, was to give them encouragement, to give them hope. Kaya maganda itong Zechariah. It is, he is a prophet of hope because even by the name Zechariah, Zechariah means Yahweh remembers. He remembered the father of John the Baptist, Zechariah. Yahweh remembers. That means God remembers His promise that He will send the Messiah. But there was already the prophet Messiah in the Old Testament that Yahweh remembers that one day He will send the Messiah. So the people somehow were encouraged by this promise. It's a message of hope that Zechariah was bringing to them that they will be back to Jerusalem. And there in Jerusalem, they will rebuild the temple. So, this prophet Zechariah was really a prophet of hope, a prophet with good news. And not only to rebuild the temple, but also to rebuild a future with God, Yahweh, in Jerusalem. So, this coming Sunday, the first reading, these are the important uh, verses. Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass. Is this reading familiar with you? Usually we read this reading during the Palm Sunday. Diba? When Jesus Christ entered, Jerusalem, and this was written about 300 years before Jesus Christ came. Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. See your king shall come to you. Behold, your king is coming. Meek, meek, riding on an ass. Later on in the gospel, there's a kind of a parallelism of this verse. You know? Learn from me, for I am meek and humble. Of heart, But here, already in the first reading, we saw somehow the coming of the Messiah. Zechariah was really a prophet of hope. Unfortunately, although you will not find this in the book of the prophet Zechariah, Zechariah, according to the biblical scholars, he was actually murdered. Though this information is not recorded in Zechariah the book, but in Matthew chapter 24, verse 35. You know, these are the few verses in the New Testament wherein explicitly a prophet was murdered. Hey, you know very well, some of these prophets were really murdered, especially those pre-exilic uh, prophets, because they are the ones who really warned the Israelites, otherwise they will be exiled, you see. And unfortunately, Zechariah, we really don't know why he was murdered. Perhaps it's not only that he was a prophet of hope, but he was also warning the people. If they return to their sin, they, they, they could be punished by God. So in Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, we read this. From the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Dito natin makita na some prophets were really murdered. And one of them was Zechariah. And he was really the son of Berechiah. Because if you read the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 1 verse 1 is very clear that Zechariah was the son of Berechiah. There is another quotation in the second book of Chronicles, chapter 24 verse 35 that the Zechariah there was the same as the Zechariah referred to in the Gospel of Matthew. Unfortunately, in the second book of the Chronicles, iba yun father ni Zechariah. Zechariah here is the son of Jehoiada. Jehoiada. And not Berechiah. Kaya, medyo nagdududa. There's a doubt 
whether the Zechariah of the Second Chronicles is the same as the Zechariah, the prophet, and referred to in Matthew, who was murdered. Anyway, this is a good example for us that prophets were really murdered because they are actually the spokesperson of Yahweh. And if their messages were not welcomed by the people, therefore, some of them, they wanted to kill their prophets. Uh, you remember the Gospel of last Sunday? He who receives you, receives me. And if someone gives you a cup of cold water to these little ones because he is my disciple, that will be rewarded. Unfortunately, some of these prophets were not welcome. And therefore, they were murdered. Reading of the Word of God, taken from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 to 33. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things had been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. As you heard the gospel, pass, the, the gospel reading, you can ask yourself personally what passage caught your attention and what passage challenged you or comforted you. I'm sure many of you were comforted by this gospel. Especially when you heard, come to me, all your burden, and find life burdensome, for I am meek and humble of heart. You know, some of these verses are really very, very consoling. But anyway, this uh, gospel that we just heard is in chapter 11. And if you remember, the three Sundays, they were taken from the gospel of Matthew chapter 10, wherein it was about the mission, the discourse on the mission. We now find a description on how Jesus fulfills the mission in these coming chapters, particularly chapter 11 and 12. And now we are in chapter 11. Now before we tackle the, the gospel passage of 11 verse 25, please remember that before this gospel passage, passage we heard, there were already resistances against Jesus. So, I think we will uh, appreciate more the gospel we have heard if we knew what happened before. So, here Jesus has to face incomprehension and resistance, particularly in chapter 11. And what were some of these incomprehension and resistance that Jesus experienced? So, for example, in Matthew 11, Verses 1 to 15. We find here John the Baptist with an eye to the past, and somehow he could not understand Jesus. If you remember, John the Baptist was in prison and he sent his disciples to ask Jesus, Ask Jesus, are you the one who is to come or should we wait for another? Somehow, John the Baptist is not sure anymore. Perhaps he was experiencing languishing inside the prison cell, experiencing suffering, and so maybe he had some doubts. Parang nadududa ba siya kung si Jesus ba talaga yung Mesiya na darating? O baka maghihintay pa siya? So, it's kind of an 
incomprehension no, of John the Baptist towards Jesus. So he asked his disciple, go to Jesus, ask him, kung siya na nga ba ang Mesiyas? Are you the one who is to come or should we wait for someone? So, siguro si Jesus also felt bad about this. No? And then, Matthew 11, continuing the chapter, verses 16 to 19, here the people with an eye to self-interest did not understand Jesus. If you remember the verses here, for example, when Jesus said, John came neither eating or drinking, and you say that he is possessed. And here comes the Son of Man, eating and drinking, and you say that he is a glutton, a drunkard, you know, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Diba? We played the flute, but you did not dance. We played the dirge, but you did not mourn. You know, incomprehension na Jesus Christ realized these people, they don't understand him. So, this is one part of this chapter when people did not understand the message of Jesus. And then, finally, in this chapter, verses 20 to 24, we find here the big cities around the lake that were not open to his message. And what are these big cities around the lake? Well, he mentioned in particular three explicitly. Uh, Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum. Uh, remember those strong words of Jesus. Alas for you, Chorazin. Alas for you, Bethsaida. If the miracles done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, and these Tyre and Sidon were actually pagan places somewhere in the north, they would have repented long ago. Para bang sinasabi, kung yung miracles na ginawa sa inyo, ginawa na doon sa Tyre and Sidon, Sila siguro nagbago. but kayo hindi pa kayo nagbabago? Why are you not changing, repenting? I have done these miracles in front of your eyes. And then he continued, And you, Capernaum, you shall be thrown down to hell. Wow, that's a strong, strong words of Jesus. For the miracles done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have been standing yet. So, those are strong words of Jesus. Ano ba itong Chorazin? Actually, Chorazin, we know very little about Chorazin, although there's a legend that they discovered there the seat of Moses. No? But Bethsaida is well known in the New Testament because somehow the, this is the home, actually, of Philip, Andrew, and Peter in Bethsaida. And here Jesus cured the blind man and also made the multiplication of the loaves. He, he fed 5,000 people here. Imagine in Bethsaida. And yet, the people there, they don't understand him. They did not repent. Kaya nga sinasabi, sinasabi niya, it's better in Tyre and Sidon if he did all these miracles. And then Capernaum, I think it was here where Jesus stayed and healed the servant of the centurion, the paralytic, for example, and he called Levi, the tax collector in Capernaum. So, these are important places, and yet, they were not open to his message. So, if finally, our reading, we started in verse 25, it is actually a verse, uh, patama, huh? attacking the scribes and the doctors who were somehow are un incapable of understanding the words of Jesus. So, let's begin in verse 25. At that time, Jesus said in reply, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. Yes, Father, this addressed by Jesus. Jesus addressed his father with the Aramaic Abba. And this is something unique. It is really very unique. Why? Because we have no similar example in all forms of Jewish religious literature of anybody addressing God as Father. Jesus Christ addressing in Aramaic Abba. 
And we know very well, this is a very endearing you know, name of the father. Abba, Daddy, Tatay, Papa. You know, is the language of this something new and unheard of. No? So, these words of Jesus, he dares to speak to God as a child, speaking to his father. It reveals the, ult the ultimate depth of Jesus' communion with God, the Father. So, pag sinabi ni Jesus, Father, Abba, He established for us a new relationship with God as a Father to us. Abba, Father. In fact, later on, we shall see how Jesus taught His disciples when you pray, Our Father, Abba, Father. And in the Mass, before the prayer of the Our Father, the priest invites the people at the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching. We dare to say. We dare. Because before it was never used. Now we dare to say, Our Father, Abba. So this one is making us real children of God. The way Jesus Christ addressed the Father with an intimate relationship with the Father. So, in turn, we can also have an intimate relationship with God the Father. Those who rejoice and accepted the good news are the little ones who are powerless. These children, they call their Papa, Daddy, and they are very simple. And yet, they are able to understand what the Father says. In fact, usually the children are very, very obedient to the Father. But then, remember, in the society of Jesus during His time, children had little status within the community or family. Parabang, they count for nothing in the society. In fact, during the time of Jesus, children in the ancient Middle East were the weakest and the most vulnerable members of society. They say that about 30% died at birth or soon after, before the age of 6. 30% they die already. And about 60% did not live past their 16th birthday. So, talagang vulnerable ang mga bata noon. And yet, somehow Jesus Christ is exalting them. That because of their simplicity and humility, they are actually more receptive to the message of the gospel, to his message. And so, he was somehow telling the disciples or the apostles, be like these little children. The little ones know the secrets of God that is hidden from the learned and the intelligent. Hidden from the learned and the intelligent. If you are simple and humble, these mysteries will be more revealed to you. <clears throat> In fact, some of these children would even be more receptive to the Spirit, even to the mysteries of life. Perhaps we don't realize that. Uh, and yet, we who are learned and intelligent, we don't, we don't understand, we don't perceive what is the mystery of life. These children, they are very simple. They just obey their parents, what their parents explain to them. Parang somehow, ang importante rito yung simplicity and humility. Kasi kung masyadong proud ka, para bang alam mo na lahat, you know, how can you be receptive to the mystery or the good news? You think that you know everything already, so you don't need the other mysteries and revelation from God. Indeed, we can learn at the feet of the Little ones. There's a letter of Paul to the Corinthians. First letter, chapter 1, verse 25. And he wrote, For the foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. That's beautiful. The foolishness of God is wiser than man's wisdom. And the weakness of God is stronger than man's strength. Maybe some of you, paano naman kami, Father? Learned, intelligent, with power. Wala na ba kaming pag-asa? 
to understand the mysteries. Of course, there are exceptions naman. No? It doesn't mean naman na uh, he completely rejected the learned and the intelligent. But if you are learned or intelligent, be simple and be humble. So there are some exceptions in the New Testament who some welcome the message of Jesus. And who were they in the New Testament? Well, a few examples, for example, exceptions like Nicodemus, a Pharisee. You know that Nicodemus, a high priest, you know, a Pharisee. He was very open to the message of Jesus. Uh, although he, he does it discreetly, secretly, he would go to Jesus even during the night to learn more. Yan si Nicodemus. So he was open, even though he was learned, intelligent, but open to the message of Jesus. We have Joseph of Arimathea, the one who offered his, his land in order to, 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 to bury the body of, of Jesus. He was rich, and yet he was open to the message of Jesus, at least allowing the body of Jesus to be buried in that place. And then we have also Gamaliel, a Pharisee, was also open to the message of Jesus. And, of course, we have Saul of Tarsus, who later on became Paul. He was a Pharisee, and yet he was open because of his conversion. And he became not only a from persecutor, he became an evangelizer. So these are some exceptions. In other words, the gospel... Uh, hindi lang naman yan para sa mga simpleng tao. Para yan sa lahat. For all. Poor, rich, intelligent, those who have not studied. For everybody. As long as you are open to the message of Jesus. Hindi natin pwedeng, the church is only church for the poor. Hindi. It's for everybody. Poor, middle class, rich, intellectual people, or those who have not studied at all. Because the message of Jesus is for all. And He wants everybody to be saved. Continuing our Gospel, verse 27, All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal Him. You know, the key word here is to know. Because for us, who knows something of English, you know sa atin is more possession of information. You knowledge sa atin is more something of intellectual no? exercise. So, to know in the Bible is not just to be intellectually informed or Possession of information. In the Bible, to know is more than that. To know in the Bible, to know in the Bible means experiencing. To know in the Bible means understanding. To know in the Bible means an intimate relationship with that person you know. Okay, if someone says, I know you. It's just like when Jesus Christ, I know my sheep and my sheep knows me. There's a kind of an intimate relationship. Uh, baka dito pa kayo mabigla. You know pa nga, in the Old Testament, would mean sexual intercourse. If you read the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 17, the words that were used there on sexual intercourse was, Cain knew his wife. You see? Cain knew his wife. But actually, the translation there is, Cain had intercourse with his wife. So, knowledge to know in the biblical sense, is more than the knowledge or information. It's an intimate relationship with someone. In fact, the worst thing that you can hear from God is, I don't know you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Uh, remember when Jesus said, not everybody that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven at the end of the, their life. I do not know you. So here, the style of showing the unique relationship of Jesus with God the Father is typical of John, known as Johannine Lodjon. 
Yung Johannine Lodgeon is a kind of a Johannine style in the Gospel of John. Madalas yung sinasabi niyang yung word know, I do not know, or you know me. In fact, this is an example from the Gospel of John, no? John 7 verse 29. Where it's re you read it, and you do not know him, but I know him, because I have come from him. So it's very similar to the Gospel for this coming Sunday. Uh, no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And dun sa Gospel of John, And you do not know Him, but I know Him, because I have come from Him. So here, this unique relationship between God, the Father, and Jesus, only the Father knows the Son. Even though the Jews claim that they know Jesus, you are a carpenter's son. They know his background. We know his father, his mother, his brothers and sisters, that mean his cousins. But they did not know that he was God, you see. They did not know that he was God. They did not know something beyond what they see in Nazareth or in Bethlehem. Only the father knows the son. And only the son knows the father. Huh? In Jesus, the invisible God has become visible. Sa ating kultura, meron tayong sinasabi, like father, like son. So in the same way, Jesus Christ the Son knows very well the Father. And Jesus Christ actually came here. He became man in order for us to understand God the Father. Verse 28. And this is one of these consoling verses no, in the gospel. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. I think many of you almost have memorized this verse. Come to me, all you who are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. You know, these verses echoes what we find in the book of Sirach. Parus halus pareho eh. Kaya nga, Importante itong book of Sirach eh. Unfortunately, if you remember, you will not find that in the Bible of the Protestants. Because, if you remember, I explained to you, there are seven books missing in their Bible. Uh, Tobit, Judith, Baruch, eto, Sirach, the book of wisdom, and the two books of Maccabees. Yung seven books na yun, wala sa Bible ng Protestante. And they are very important. Like for example, this one, the book of Sirach. Or we call it also the book of Ecclesiasticus, uh, which is different from the book of Ecclesiastes. So itong book of Ecclesiasticus, which is the same as the book of Sirach, no, you will find a parallelism, no, somehow similar to what Jesus Christ said in the Gospel of Matthew. And this is what we will read in the book of Sirach. For example, in that chapter 51. Come near, you are without understanding, and join her school. So, hindi ba? Thank you, Father, for having revealed this to the simple, and you have hidden them from the learned. Ito, come near, you are without understanding. And then, in the book of Sirach, we also continuing that chapter, put your neck under her yoke, and let your minds receive instruction. And then, my toil has been slight, and I found deep rest. So, yung sinabi natin na, Come near, you who are without understanding. is parang it echoes what Jesus said. Come to me, all you who labor and burden. Put your neck under her yoke. Take my yoke upon you. Diba? And then, my toil has been slight, and I found deep rest. For my yoke is easy, and my burden light and 
burden, I will give you rest. Those who are overburdened. Dito, I found deep rest. Of course, this book of Sirach, it is referring more to the wisdom. No? But, you know, pagdating sa New Testament, who is the God of wisdom? God of wisdom is Jesus Christ because He has all the, the wisdom coming from the Father who knows everything because the Father has given to Him everything in Jesus. Jesus here invites all those who are weary and find life burdensome because He promises them rest. Sa ating panahon ngayon, in our situation, this is something very, very consoling because how many of our people now find life burdensome? You know, daming problema sa buhay. You know? And here comes Jesus somehow giving us some comfort. You know? Come to me, all you will labor, overburden, I will give you rest. Learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Ano ba itong yoke na ito? Uh, Actually, yung yoke, this is what you find uh, in the screen. That's the yoke. Uh, it's a wooden bar, well fitted across the neck of two oxen or cows. No? Nilalagay yan sa leeg ng mga baka, the yoke. Uh, when they, uh, when they uh, prepare the soil no, for uh, planting, no? they have these two cows or two oxen with this yoke. So that they, they are parallel to one another and they work together. But the yoke there is well fitted in their, in their neck. Otherwise, masakit yan. Pag hindi well made sa kanilang leeg, masakit. If it is not well fitted. So you can imagine Jesus Christ saying, For my yoke is easy and my burden light. Eh, sabi ng mga biblical scholars, since... His father was a carpenter, and of course, perhaps Jesus Christ knew carpentry. So, he applied what he learned in carpentry. Perhaps, he's really making mga yoke uh, for the oxen. So, talagang very, very practical si Jesus. Kaya for Jesus, I will make you a well-fitted yoke. Wag ka magalala. You will not find it hard. You will be relaxed. With, your, with that yoke that I will give you. Yes, Jesus did not remove the yoke from us, but He will give us a comfortable yoke. Hindi naman niya tinanggal itong yoke sa atin eh. Para bang wala na tayong ma-experience na sacrifice, no? Or problems in life. No. Ang sinasabi ni Jesus, I will give you a yoke that is easy because my burden is light. And what makes it easy for you? I'll give you a yoke that is well-fitted in your neck. Manageable. Well-made, tailor-made. Yan ang maganda kay Jesus. And the yoke is metaphorically used to describe those things that are burdensome to the lives of the people, especially during the time of Jesus. Huh? Ano ba yung mga burdensome sa tao during the time of Jesus? What was the burdensome during the time of Jesus? So here are some of the burdensome during the time of Jesus. So imagine when the people were listening to Jesus who were heavy burdened with tithes, levies, and taxes. You know? And here comes Jesus saying, you know, take my yoke, for my yoke is easy. Dami lang babayaran. Dami tumataas no? ang babayaran. Ah, lalo na ngayon, di ba? Marami nagko-complain, ba't ba ang taas ng kuryente ko? <laughs> di ba? <laughs> Patas ang tubig ko, eh. hindi ko naman ginamit ng... Tatlong ba? Ibang mga building nga. Hindi nga ginamit yung building factory. And yet, mataas yun. Kuryente. Saan ba ito nang galing? Diba? Then, taxes. You know? E, e, yan ang problema na noon eh. No? Those, these are some of the yoke that are burdensome. And then, another yoke that is burdensome, when the farmers were governed by the whims of the landowners. They are being controlled by the landowners because may mga landowners corrupt. So, they are really burdened by these landowners who, are, who will pay them no, with a very little amount, give them more work for many hours, and yet they are literally paid. No? So, yan ang mga problema. Burden ng ibang mga tao during the time of, of Jesus. And then finally, there is these 613 commandments imposed on the Jews by the Pharisees. Too many laws. Too many rules, 
too many bills, you know. And yet, minsan ang hirap na bawat isang commandment, meron pang anak, no, dumadami. And the Pharisees were really very strict that will that should uh, govern their, their their conduct according to the commandments that were imposed on them. Eh, si Jesus, anong ginawa niya? Jesus reduced the many commandments to a double commandment of loving God and neighbor. Is this already one example how Jesus Christ uh, somehow lightened the yoke or the burden in the life of the people? My yoke is easy and my burden light. You summarize these all commandments into two, loving God and loving your neighbor. And learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart. You know, this is very practical. Usually, yung mga mayayabang, naku, ang daming problema niyan <laughs> sa buhay, hindi ba? Pero yung mga nagpapakababa, yung mga humble, pasensyoso yan, hindi ba? Hindi yan bugnutin o madali mawalan ng, ano, ng pag-asa sa buhay o madali magalit, hindi. Pero yung mga proud people, naku, madali magalit yan. Madaling mairita. They can be irritable, you know. But if you are gentle and humble of heart, many of these problems in life will be taken in a beautiful way. Hindi burden. You know what are the strategies to take in order to take this problem or trials in life lightly. Because you are gentle and humble in heart. Just like Jesus. Jesus wants, this is the secret actually. If you want to take your problems lightly, be gentle and humble. And Jesus Christ definitely is not a person who was brutal, rough, hard, angry, arrogant, but affable, mild, pleasant, gentle, and humble. Learn from me, for I make and humble of heart, so your yoke will be easy. So, for my yoke is easy and my burden light. Remember, Jesus Christ did not remove the yoke of our life. The yoke of Jesus is easy, but it's also very, very demanding. Why? Because itong yoke na ito refers also to the demands of Christian faith. Please remember, of course, you can reduce the, the commandments into two. But remember, he also spoke about the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the single-hearted. Blessed are those who are thirst for holiness and righteousness. Blessed are those who are persecuted. And then some of these teachings, diba? about divorce, about anger, about adultery. He has also some teachings. But they are very light if you take them with gentleness and humility. It's easy but demanding. And the yoke of love is demanding but it eases everything. So, if you put all these rules and teachings of Jesus, even the Beatitudes, if you take them with love, because you love God above all things and you love your neighbor, everything becomes easy. But if you take them with, you know, it's like an obligation, parang napipilitan ka pa, you're just forced to obey the Beatitudes or the teachings of Jesus, the yoke becomes heavy and becomes more, you know, burdensome. Kumbaga, there is a saying, whatever we do with love is light. And love does not feel the burden. Uh, it's just like pag uh, yung basong hawak-hawak mo eh, pag nilayo mo sa iyo for uh, three minutes, five minutes, mahihirapan ka. Tapos mga ngawit ka eh. Pero if inilapit mo yung, yung basong tubig na yan, kahit na dalin mo yan for isang oras, one hour, very light yan. So, if you embrace with love the trials and you are gentle and humble, perhaps the burden will be light. Learn from me for I make and humble of heart. And you take that with love. Si St. Augustine is a very beautiful uh, quotation. Where there is love, there is no toil. If there is toil, the toil is love. Beautiful. Where there is love, there is no 
toil. If there is toil, the toil is love. So if you remove the toil, it's because you have so much love. Uh, but if you do things uh, with kind of an attitude of, of obligation, sige, gagawin ko na lang alang, no? But if you do it with love, it becomes light. Even our duties, our work, our duties towards our family, duties towards the company where we work, sa ating office mates, no? All this becomes light if we take it with love. Because that toil is love. Finally, if you remember the first reading from the prophet Zechariah, the king shall come to you as a just savior, meek, riding on an ass. So, when Jesus Christ somehow invites us, come to me, all you who are burdened, I will give you rest. Pero in reality, it is God who is coming to you. From the very beginning, God has come to you. Now He's just inviting you. Perhaps when He came to your life, you did not welcome Him. Now you welcome Him. Come to me now. But in reality, it was really God who was always with you. He came to you already from the very beginning. So in other words, for those who feel oppressed, those who feel depressed, especially lalong lalo na in this pandemic, those who are bulldozed, forgotten, violated, deprived, abused, taken for granted, sick and tired of tyrized, bullied, not listened to, God is coming to save you. And He wants also you to come to Him. For His yoke is easy and His burden light. Let us now meditate or rather examine ourselves through the Word of God, the contemplatio, and ask how we can put into practice the Word of God. We can ask ourselves when you hear the Word of God, do you consider yourself as the learned and clever or the little ones? How do you, how do you receive the Word of God? Ah, alam ko na yan, di ba? Okay, yeah, you don't even listen to it. You feel proud already. Remember, the Word of God is our nourishment. It's the nourishment of our soul. So at least, kahit na sa online mass, you can hear the Word of God, even though you don't receive the body of Christ. It's part of your nourishment. Pero kung if you feel, you know, I don't need that, you know, you are one of those learned who fail to understand the message of Jesus. Are you learned or are you the little one? Number two, what is my burden that is most burdensome at this moment? What burden comforts you or what burden comforts me? In what way can Jesus ease my burden? In what way can I come to Jesus for rest? And finally, am I gentle and humble in dealing with others? Or perhaps you can ask yourself, am I really gentle and humble, just like Jesus Christ, so that your yoke, your burden will be lighter? But if you are proud, you are arrogant, I'm sure your burden will be heavier in your life. Jesus Christ is inviting us to be gentle and humble of heart, patterned after His sacred heart. Let us now pray to the gods, through God's word, to the gospel we just heard. And we shall conclude with a prayer from Psalm number 145. I will extol you, O my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all His works. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them di discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. 
The Lord is faithful in all His words and holy in all His works. The Lord lifts up all who are falling and raises up, raises up all who are bowed down. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you and good night. God bless you all.